Hey, hey, CDA, and today I want to share with you the new update of Dyson Sphere Program that, at least to me, came completely unexpected, but actually introduces a couple of new things that are very, very useful. And considering the small amount of attention that was given to it, you might have missed it. So, here we go. So let me start with the thing that's probably going to be most exciting to all of you, and that is the new player in town. Because remember these things, the nice stackers that allowed you to combine four belts into one belt with completely stacked items assuming you went through all this trouble to first stack everything to two and then stack everything to four or later on they became completely useless because the ILS was just doing it for you well like I said there's a new player in town introducing the pile sorter and initially when you're looking at this you might be wondering like okay TDA but this is just a normal sorter what's that going to do well first of all it's a lot quicker than the mark 3 sorter that you can see over here so identical belt of inputs as you can see this is going to be able to keep up while this isn't and if you look at the speed you can see why this is uh, going at a 10 trips per second, while this is only a uh, 6 trips per second. So it's a small difference, but it's a noticeable difference to begin with. But that's not really the main point. Because if we look at the pile sorter, you can see it has a load stack and unload stack that is upgradable. So basically what you can do is you can go to your technology screen and go to the upgrades and you will find a new line of upgrades right over here that will allow you to upgrade your pile sorters and for example the first upgrade allows you to feed out stacks of two so i'm in sandbox mode right here so i can just unlock that like this and now you can see this is actually doing the work of the normal stacker that we had but rather than having to place that in between your belts and then connecting the belts which was already really annoying to begin with this is actually doing it a lot more convenient than what we've seen before. Which means you no longer need a complicated setup or a very inconvenient setup to stack four belts up to one because as you can see this is all you need. Or if you want to keep things really simple and you just want to stack up your belt all you need to do is make a sorter loop back on itself and as you can see it will just keep stacking up all the items until you have a stack of four and then it will feed out the stack of four because it can no longer stack things up. So like I said uh, this is a lot more convenient in order to get your stacks piled up than the piler that we had before. You unlock the pile sorter along with the automatic piler and as you can see they cost very similar resources. So even though the pile sorter is slightly more expensive because you actually need two Mark III sorters to actually make one of the pile sorters, uh, I don't think you're ever going to be building these again i'm not entirely sure there might still be a use case for that but honestly when you can do the same thing with a pile sorter i can actually see re uh, so replacing the mark three sorters with the pile sorters altogether because they're they're basically doing the same thing but more efficient and they're actually they have more uh, options available to us if we want to do things like stacking a belt so uh, long story short these things are awesome and you're going to be using them a lot and you might be redesigning a lot of your blueprints as a result of this another nice quality of life upgrade is related to the end game in terms of upgrades because well we already had a pretty big inventory but there is now an upgrade available that allows you to make your inventory even larger so you can carry around all those materials that you need to make your planet wide blueprints there have also been quite a few new things added to the combat system. So, for example, when you go to the combat mode now, you will see this thing popping up. And that actually allows you to throw stuff that you put into your inventory. So, if I check out my mech, for example, over here, I added some combustible units to my magazine right now. And as you can see, it has a new throwable quality that shows that if I throw this thing, it will actually deal 1000 damage. And it's, since I'm playing in sandbox mode, it's been completely upgraded. But um, basically, I can throw stuff around now that is not necessarily ammunition itself. So this goes into a very specific slot. So it's this slot with the nuclear bomb thingy on it. Uh, you can't fit it in here. You'll get a, a, a warning that says that no, that doesn't work like that. And you can't put anything in there. So it needs to be a throwable item. And you can check what you can throw by hovering over the item itself as you can see titanium for example has no throwable quality if i hover over combustible units it does there's also some other things you can throw for example water but that has no effect so you might want to check what you're throwing around uh the throwing itself is extremely satisfying so let me show you it's like small nuclear bombs that you're throwing around so is this massively useful i don't know maybe on 
lower difficulties actually and does allow you to uh, become a bit um, more of a killing machine yourself on higher difficulties you probably don't want to be doing any of the fighting by yourself but still uh, it's an option that you have now you can also put your ammunition on either a manual auto or both so that allows you to have a little bit more control over what type of ammo your bot is shooting um, basically uh, it's just a little bit of a tweak to the manual combat system now one really uh, massive update here and that's especially useful in the late game is that we have this new skill over here it's the energy shield burst the way that works so you can see the button by default is b or you can just click this it will allow you to charge up your mech and then once you release your charge boom so that's a very useful thing to do basically you are ripping away your own shield in order to do damage around you so again make sure that you're not fighting too large group because if they're ripping out your shield to begin with you're not going to be able to survive that but especially later on you can just run into a base and blow it up with your own shield we also get a few new turrets because we didn't have enough turrets to begin with. So the first one actually unlocks really early on. It's just red science and that is the jammer tower. Now this is actually going to slow down the enemy and I'll show you that in a moment. One thing worth noting is that it does need actual inputs and these jamming capsules that it uses to fire are pretty expensive. So I'm not entirely sure how much you'll be using this on higher difficulties because like, like I said inputs are pretty expensive but they are very effective. The Jammer Tower is actually quite interesting because even if you put it on the front line like I've done over here just to demonstrate how it works you can see the enemies are mostly ignoring it and still are trying to be aligned for my turrets and my signal towers. So um, you do need to actually put them on the front line because as you can see they have a limited range although it's, it's fairly large but still it's not super large. And there's another trick that you need to keep in mind while using these because as you can see they all tend to fire at the same time. But there is a phase shift that you can use where you can say, for example, this one is supposed to have a one second delay. Now, if you do that, then you will see that this one fires one second after all the others. So what you kind of want to do is make sure that you have set them all set in different phases. Let me do it like this, for example. And that way they will all fire at different timings, one after each other. And that pretty much means that you will now have permanently slowed down units now initially the um, jamming capsule only slows them for about half a second disregard the upgrades again and sandbox mode at the moment um, but you can unlock a more advanced version of this if you go down to the technology screen there's a suppressing capsule over here that will actually slow them down for a lot longer and actually slows them down a lot more as well so you can really make sure that all those pesky enemies coming at your base are basically taken down a notch and that makes them a lot easier to defeat as a result. Now another new tower that we have, and apologies for the humming noise but that's the sound they make, are the short range plasma turrets that you can see over here. Now first of all these things look really really cool um, and you can think of these as uh, implosion cannons on steroids basically. They use the plasma capsules as an input rather than shells for example but they do blast damage so they have a slightly smaller blast radius than the implosion plan but they do about seven times as much damage so that's pretty significant and you can see these that i only have up for a very short amount of time just to demonstrate them to you they are racking up kills pretty quickly so it's a lot of damage in a single tower as you can see you actually need to spread them out quite a bit compared to other towers so you will need to figure out how to fit these into your defense if you want to use them at all because i'm not entirely sure that these are worth it but then again i haven't been able to experiment with them too much uh, the reason is that these things are again pretty expensive to make you need quite a bit of materials for these their rate of fire is actually pretty low as well um again maybe in combination actually with the jammer towers slowing down the units and making sure that you have some time to kill them these are actually pretty efficient Again, we'll just have to figure out, but at least we have a new toy to play with. Uh, so that means that other than using the plasma capsules for space defense with the already existing plasma turret, you now have the short range version of that for planetary defense as well. There are also quite a few small little changes that are not super noticeable initially, but they will actually make your life a lot easier. And well, any upgrades and bug fixes are of course very welcome. So for example, 
something that was really bugging me out is that the battlefield analysis base drones were sometimes being dispatched from like the other side of the planet to build something while you were standing right next to whatever you wanted to build. That should now no longer happen. The um, drones will always be dispatched from the closest source that could be either you or a battlefield analysis base. So no more drones flying all over the place. On top of that, the optimization of where the drones are going to and in which order, etc. has now been optimized. So you should be seeing, for example, in terms of repairing your defense, that that's a lot more efficient than it was before. The battlefield analysis bases are also kind of debugged. So what would happen initially is that every now and then, and it's a little bit hard to show you that, but sometimes they would uh, have, for example, a stack of iron over here that was not completely full, but it would then just uh, start a new stack of iron. So actually, when you were sorting your battlefield analysis base, maybe I can show you this with a more outdated example over here. Every now and then you would press a sort, and you would suddenly have empty spaces in your battlefield analysis base because it would combine different stacks. It should no longer do that, it should prioritize filling one stack before it starts a next. You will also be able to actually interact with these relay stations when you're on these, uh, the planetary map. So for example, if I want to travel here, I can now just double click it and actually travel to that relay station rather than having to guess where the relay stations are when I'm approaching a planet. So you can either use that to travel to them or make sure you're not traveling to them and you can make sure you land on the other side of the planet. Another subtle but important change is that whenever you build a new battlefield analysis base, it will start out with these 10 block um, stacks in the bottom. Now these are actually changed from red to blue. Blue meaning that they can be used by the battlefield analysis base, but they won't be, for example, transported out by your drones or by your sorters. They will actually stick in here and there's not, not going to be any stacks being placed in here. So for example, let's say you have laser turrets on your defense line, you can put it like this. This means that the laser turrets will stay in your battlefield analysis base, but can still be used by the base to repair uh, turrets that were damaged or destroyed. Uh, well, the destroyed ones, obviously. Uh, there will be no garbage being put in here. And of course, if you don't like this, you can just increase this or decrease this as you wish. But by default, you will start out with this blocked a line of stacks in the bottom which is i think really convenient when you're setting up a defensive line for those of you that like your large blueprints you will have noticed that when you're trying to build such a thing that your fps can drop to like crawl now this is still an issue as you can see because i'm already on the update and you can see my fps dropping but it has been re-optimized so you should be seeing an improvements uh, improvement in your performance i should say um, when you're building a large blueprint. So this is a very nice thing for those of you that like really scaling things up in the late game. Finally, there's a couple of rebalancing changes. So for example, your ammunition will now last you a little bit longer because the um, ammo count has been increased. The Dark Fog will actually drop a little bit more stuff again. So they were scaled down initially from launch and now they're scaled back up a little bit again. And all of all, there's just some minor tweaks and tunes as well that I'm not going to go into, but uh, just know that the developers are still actively working on this game and make your game even better than it was already before. So highly appreciate it, especially when you get these kinds of updates completely unexpected. So I hope you found this summary useful, this explanation of what these things are and how you could use them. If you did, make sure you to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I hope to catch you in the next one.